When making a game as complex as Hypixel Skyblock, there's no doubt that some bugs or glitches will slip past the developers. These bugs could be as harmless as items having the wrong name, all the way to straight up dupe glitches. Now recently, I've been getting a lot of questions of how I got command blocks, dragon eggs, and a few other items. So today, I thought I would explain how these illegal items were made. All the way from creating dragon heads out of thin air in a version that doesn't even support them, to the secret behind how the server's biggest co-op was created. If you at all enjoyed this video, be sure to sub and like for more epic gamer content. And with that being said, enjoy the video. I'll start out with an easy one, the dragon egg. Now, we all know it's not a drop from the actual dragon fight, as, as cool as that would be. These were actually made from the inner chest navigation bar. The way it worked is you would open your inner chest and go to the top row. This is where you can choose what inner chest page you're on, and if you go to an unlocked page, you can right click to change the icon. Now all of these icons you see here, you were able to just take for yourself, but since most of them are just regular items, the main focus was the dragon egg, the nether star, and beacons. What you would do is you would select the item that you wanted, in this case I'm going to use dragon eggs, and then using a mod such as 5zig, you would need to create some chat macros. Create two macros, both set to run slash inner chest. Now if you push both hotkeys at the same time, this would bug out the inner chest and allow you to take any item from the top row, including the icon that you had selected. From there, you could do whatever you wanted with them. You could trade them, you could use them to build, or you could also sell them to the NPC for 10k each. Yeah, this, this part wasn't too good. I heard that you could make around 18 mil an hour just from creating dragon eggs and then selling them back, but thankfully this bug didn't work for that long. The admins were pretty quick to fix it and dragon eggs were added to the blacklist. Next up, I'm going to cover the single glitchiest item in the entirety of Skyblock, the repelling candle. At face value, this looks just like a decorative candle, which also happens to prevent mobs from spawning on your island. But believe me, this is much, much more than that. For starters, you could break portal blocks by placing the candle inside of the portal, and if you did it correctly, you could remove the name tag and be left with something like this. Another pretty neat feature was if you place down a candle, turn off particles, and then flood it with water so that you would break the torch, leaving just the candle with no flame. From there, all that you had to do was place a minion expander on it, and you would get a place command block. But you could actually take this a step further. Instead of placing the minion expander on the candle, if you put it in the corner, you could then take a barrier and place it just as you would any normal block. So what you're watching now is me make the floor to my bunker out of barriers. Now I wanted to do something cool with them, and it was either make a floor out of them or place them above all the chests on the island. So once my new floor was installed, I added lava underneath just because it, it just kind of looked cool. But for the next week, every time I walked down my bunker and I headed down the stairs, my natural Minecraft instinct would kick in and I, I'd just hesitate because my brain sees lava and it doesn't register the barriers and it, 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 just, it took a while to get used to. Alright, let's do a little bit of backtracking. So while I was making my floor, I accidentally discovered a server crash. I watered the candle just like normal, but I fat fingered my hotkey and instead of placing down the minion expander, I I placed the torch back in the candle which somehow triggered a server crash. And if you don't already know, server crashes are probably the one of the most dangerous things in Skyblock. So they kind of just really upped the severity of this. The admins began working on a fix for this while I was finishing up my floor and I thought that was the end of it. But silently in the background, a third party had also been messing around with candles. And they found out that if you have a skull placed down, then you do the watering candle command block stuff. If you break the head and you put a furniture inside of it, then place a block to update the server, it would create mob heads. And depending on the orientation of the head whenever you placed it, you could get either creeper, zombie, wither, or normal skeleton, and of course, the dragon head. Now, I'm not even going to try to explain the science behind this. Someone said that it had something to do with like damage values or cycling MBTs, but to me, it, this is all just witchcraft. Short recap, the single item, the seemingly harmless addition to Skyblock, opened the door to break portals, and it actually reopened the door for placeable barriers, command blocks, and mob heads. I say reopened because this isn't actually the first time that these were made. Months back, you could actually place these blocks using sprays. It was as simple as placing a spray down on a block, and then placing a minion expander or a barrier in the corner. That, that was literally it. Mob heads were a little bit more complicated though. The coordinates of these had to be negative. I, I don't fully know why, but it was the only quadrant that it worked in. Then if you place down any minion, then any furniture, and then any head, all inside of the same block, and then you reloaded the island. Upon rejoining your island, the minion would be gone, but he was he was actually just invisible. And the head that you placed down would be replaced with a mob head. And again, the orientation of the head would change what mob it is. Now, if you try and pick up the head, 
it would crash the server, which as you know, is a big no-no. So I recorded this and I shipped it off to the admins to get fixed. After 30 minutes, there was a game update. Now the patch for this not only fixed the ability to even make this minion furniture concoction, it allowed for these heads to be collected. Now I think it's time that we take a look at a lesser known illegal item, beacons. Now, your first thought might be that these aren't illegal items. I mean, it's not too uncommon to visit someone's island and they'd either have beacons down for the effects or just as a decoration. But most of the people that bought them from the stacks being sold on Auction House don't know how these actually came into existence. And I'm surprised it's not more well known because beacons were obtainable on three separate occasions. The first time you could get beacons was all the way back in the beginning of Skyblock. For the first few months, you could just craft a beacon, but since there was no way to get nether stars, you could substitute it with either a saving grace or a day or night crystal but in the very beginning of skyblock everyone was broke and these items were seen as pretty expensive at the time almost no one at the time had enough materials laying around to craft one and those that did preferred to use it for progression other than a single decorative block in the couple months that you could craft these there couldn't have been more than a couple stacks of them made and once it was patched those were all that existed for around six months in early april there was a bug with the bazaar where you could just take items from the menu now it wouldn't give you the actual item if you took superior frags out, you wouldn't actually get superior frags. It was just a head with the skin just to be used as an icon. But anyway, you could take out any item from this menu that you wanted, including the catalyst. Now, once you had this, all that you had to do was drop it on the floor, and whenever you picked it up, you would get a legendary nether star, which, as you probably guessed, can be used to craft beacons. The bizarre glitch was fixed within the hour, stopping the production of nether stars and other items, and to this day, it's actually still possible to craft beacons if you have a nether star. But most people, including myself, have decided to hold on to these items, and it's a good thing that we did. Because just like dragon eggs, you could use the ender chest exploit to create beacons. At the push of two buttons, you could have two free beacons, bringing thousands of them into the game completely out of thin air. This is where a majority of the beacons on the server came from, so next time you see a beacon on someone's island or go to buy one from auction, you'll know that these items were glitched into the game. To end it off, we're going to be talking about mega co-ops. Now, as you all know, co-ops have a base of 5 players per island, and if you're lucky enough to have more friends, you can purchase 3 more slots from the community shop, setting the cap to 8 players. But there's been multiple ways around that player limit. The first one, I'm not exactly sure how it was done, because I wasn't around for it, but it was something about staying in a menu and then getting co-op kicked, then you add more people, then you go back on a menu, I, I, I don't know exactly. But the second method was as simple as sending out a bunch of co-op invites and then having everybody accept it at the same time. You could get a max of around 20 players with this because the invites do expire after a bit, but it did work pretty well. But what if I told you that there was a way to get theoretically infinite players onto the same co-op profile? Well, there was, and the way that it worked is someone slash co-op adds another player, and then anyone, literally anyone, can type slash co-op view and then the invite creator's UUID and they would get the invite screen up. Despite never being added to the co-op, all that you had to do from there was just accept the invite and you were on the profile. This is the same method that we used to create the 30 player mega co-op back in July. It was supposed to be a fun profile with a bunch of YouTubers and other good players where we could progress and make content on the same island, but that got shut down for several reasons. The first one being that some menus went off screen or just didn't load entirely. The second was it was putting a lot of stress on the server, trying to load 30 accounts on one island. And the third is because the way we made it was technically using a very dangerous exploit. I mean, you could literally take over someone's island and there would be absolutely nothing they could do about it. Like imagine this, my island wants to invite another member, so we send out the invite, and six random people who we didn't invite join the profile and start griefing everything, and there's literally nothing we could do about it either. You need to have everyone on the island to agree to kick a player, and I'm willing to bet that no griefer is going to accept that. The almost year and a half of work, totaling tens of thousands of hours would be gone in minutes. But thankfully, that never happened because it's already fixed. Screw you idiots, I know some of you had that idea, I, I can sense it. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know if you found this interesting. I have some other stuff I could go over, but I want to see if people enjoyed this first. But in the meantime, I did another video about rare items in Skyblock a while back, so if you found this cool, be sure to give that a watch. But that's all for now. See ya.